and welcome. We're live here from Cape Central High School at the Cape Central Fieldhouse. I'm Tyler Whitener along with Kevin Bishop bringing you this Class 4 Girls District 1 Championship between Dexter and Notre Dame. And Kevin, big game here, big rivalry between these two schools, Dexter and Notre Dame. And tonight shouldn't be any different as this is probably, what, the fifth or sixth year these two teams have went at it in the, the district championship game. It is, and it's always a great game. I mean, it, this has become a really good rivalry for the girls, and so I expect uh, just a, a showdown tonight from both sides of the ball. Certainly, and these teams come in, uh, Dexter at 23-3, and three, and no, the Notre Dame Lady Bulldogs at 21-2, and two, so very good teams coming into this uh, matchup. Dexter defeated Notre Dame about uh, three weeks ago, it might have yeah. been. A uh, very tight game coming yeah. down to the end. Notre Dame had Dexter down in the second half, I believe, by about eight points in the third quarter. Dexter had to make a late rally to win that game. That was at Notre Dame. But uh, we got a neutral court here at Cape Central tonight. And you never know, a neutral court, these two teams, uh, they, they know each other well. They've been playing each other for the past three or four years. These girls know each other quite well. It might just be a matter of who comes out and has the better game plan and executes it. You know, everything else is going to take, take care of itself. I agree. I mean, both teams – coming into the game with a strong senior class. Uh, you know, both of those senior classes, I'm sure, are wanting to go out as district champion. Uh, so, you know, a lot of leadership on the floor tonight, and I expect to see a good ball game. Certainly. And we got a little time here before game, here at pregame. We're about five minutes away from tip-off, so we're going to take a quick break and take a, take a break for some of our sponsors for tonight's game. We'll be right back. Over 12,000 financial advisors. Over $700 billion in assets under care. How did Edward Jones get so big? Could you teach our kids that trick? By not acting that way. Okay, last quarter. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. In 1958, my father Alan started in the car business. And today we're celebrating over 55 years in the car business. A lot of things have changed. Brands have come and gone. Models have been redesigned. But one thing has always stayed the same. Our commitment to our customers, our drive for complete satisfaction, and our mission to give the best service in the area. Professional grade runs in the family. Stop by today and see us at Allen Christian Buick GMC in Dexter. Hi, I'm Cecil Weeks of Quality Center here in downtown Malden, where we've been in business since 1977. We have the best selection of Whirlpool and Maytag appliances. We also have the latest LCD, LED, and plasma high-definition televisions from LG and Sharp, as well as the finest furniture for your living room or bedroom. And don't forget, delivery is available. So come and experience the Quality Center furniture and appliance store in downtown Malden. I am Tyla Roland Hubrecht. I am the Republican nominee for the special election and candidate for the 151st state representative race. I will be your conservative voice in Jefferson City, committed to fighting for our Southeast Missouri values and principles. I am a lifelong resident of Stoddard County and I look forward to meeting everyone in our district and talking with you. I ask for your support on August the 5th. Thank you. Paid for by citizens for Tyla Roland Hubrecht. Gilbert Willard, Treasurer. And we're back at about two minutes away from tip-off here at Cape Central Fieldhouse. And, uh, Kevin, we're about set to go here. And, uh, you know, the Dexter Lady Bearcats went all the way out to the Final Four last year, come away with fourth place, bring back pretty much all their starters and their team, except, uh, help me out here. Brittany Harris. Brittany Harris. Brittany yeah. Harris. Uh, went to graduation, one of their main players, but a strong nucleus they've brought back. Senior-dominated group, and they've also got some underclassmen they work in. And this team's pretty hungry to, to move on and get back to the Final Four and do a little better this year, reach that state championship game. And that's what their goal is this year. Notre Dame, they, you know what the role they're wanting to play. They're wanting to play the spoiler, yes. the Cinderella, and uh, move on with this district championship here tonight. And yeah, this, this is a big matchup for both teams. This is a very... Very interesting. You've got the dominant team in Dexter over the past few years, and you've got the the team that's really looking to knock off Dexter and uh, you know, in, the, in the upset role here tonight. Yeah, and both these coaches are no strangers to these games. Both well coached. Uh, you know, 
Coach Renee Peters for Notre Dame. She's been here. She's won this district championship. Of course, Coach Allen, they've won it the last three years. So this is about as good as it gets in girls' basketball. Certainly. And we're about set here for the start lineups. As fans are reminded that the purpose of this contest is to block the educational mission of these two schools, do your part by representing your community and school in a positive fashion, and displaying good sportsmanship toward officials, players, coaches, and other fans during the game. Respect those sitting around you at all times and enjoy tonight's contest. Now let's meet the participants. Our visiting team, the scoreboard tonight will be the Notre Dame High School Lady Bulldogs. And our home team will be the Lady Bearcats from Dexter. And now the starters. Now here's our starters. First, First for the Notre Dame, Dame Bulldogs. A five foot five senior, number 12, Amy Seaver. Number 12. Annie Siebert. For Dexter, a five foot nine senior, number 10. And for the Lady Bearcats, their leading scorer, number 10, Hannah No. Up next here for the Bulldogs. For Notre Dame, a five foot seven senior, number 13. Caitlin number 13, Welter. Caitlin Welter. And for the Lady Bearcats, the sophomore, number 11, Melanie McEwen. And for the Bulldogs, number 15, Carson Powers. And the senior, number 12, Allison Gerald for the Dexter Bearcats. And for Notre Dame, number 22, Shelby Vesey. And Shelby had a fine career at Notre Dame. Yep. She needs a big night for the Lady Bulldogs. And the other senior anchor, number 15, Erica Cobb for the Bearcats. And for the Lady Bulldogs, number 23, Haley Lynch. And rounding it out for the Dexter Bearcats, the senior, number 22, Paige Patterson. And yeah, Paige Patterson done a great job this year, really having to fill that, fill that void from Brittany Harris from last year. She stepped up in a big way. 
and certainly need a big night from her for the Lady Bearcats. We do, and you, you know, Paige last night, she was the uh, the last of the four seniors to hit the 1,000-point mark um, in the game against Kennett last night, and that in itself to have four kids in one class hit the 1,000-point mark is phenomenal, but it, it you know, it shows these girls have been playing since they were freshmen, so they're no stranger to this atmosphere. And here we go, about to set up for the tip-off live from Cape Central Fieldhouse. It's the first time we've done a broadcast here, Kevin, and yeah. really nice facility, only a few years old. New high school built out here right off of the interstate. Yeah, really nice. I mean, the football field had turf. I mean, it's just top of the line, everything up here. Yep. And we're ready for the tip, and the Bearcats will control the tip. Hannah no drives, and she'll draw the foul against number 15, Carson Powers. Oh, actually, it uh, looks like an offensive foul. Oh, they did. They caught no, I, I don't sure. even know if it was an offensive foul. It might have been just a, maybe a walking or a jump ball. Yeah, I don't see any walks on the board. So, Yeah, it was a jump ball. Okay, yeah. jump ball. And Dexter will retain possession under their own basket. Hannah No inbound the ball, lobs it up to Cobb. No good. She gets her own rebound. And we have another jump ball. You can definitely sense a little bit of the uh, early game jitters from both teams yep. here. I mean, they're going at it strong, but. Hannah No once again inbounds it to Erica Cobb. Lady Bearcats will attempt to set up an offense here. Nice pass to Hannah. She goes down. Paige gets it. Goes up. Good. So Paige Patterson and the Lady Bearcats have the first night points of the night. And they're going to foul in the far corner. That was uh, Melanie McEwen in charge McEwen. of that foul. So the Lady Bearcats coming out in a full court press. And it's one thing that a, Dex, a Co Chad Allen coach team, they're going to play great defense. And she walks. And a turnover by the Lady Bulldogs. And, and Dexter plays very aggressive, yeah. especially when they've got a good matchup. And they match up well with these, these Lady Bulldogs. And they should, they probably will be aggressive all night. Patterson again. And the Lady Bulldogs extending their pressure, as you saw there, yeah. and Dexter able to get a transition bucket. Now another turnover by Notre Dame. Yeah, so far the Bearcats, these last two possessions have looked really poised. Melly McEwen doing a good job bringing the ball down the floor. Erica Cobb bells Hannah No out. And we got another jump ball. So that'll be our third possession change. In the first minute, 15 seconds of the ball game. Notre Dame pushes the ball up the floor. Deep three. Won't go. Notre Dame will retain possession. Coach Allen not, not happy about the possession call. And a push foul on the drive. Admitted by the Lady Bearcats. Didn't quite see. It looked like it was on Tyler. Erica Cobb, I think, Tyler. Foul number 15, Erica Cobb, her first team coach. Notre Dame with the three. That's good. That'll be nice. And a foul on the inbound. Notre Dame called. And that was uh, Carson Powers. And 
the ball deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Dexter. And no, once again, will inbound it inside. McEwen goes up. It's good. And a steal. McEwen with a steal and another basket. So four quick points. Dexter leads eight to three. And Notre Dame will take a timeout. And we'll take one as well. We'll be right back. Here at Gene and Company Certified Public Accountants, we strive to provide quality accounting and income tax services in an accurate and timely fashion. It's the time of year to file your yearly tax return, and we invite you to visit with us face to face to compile your return quickly and accurately. We'll make the process as painless as possible with electronic filing and personal preparation. So stop by any of our locations in Dexter, Malden, and Jonesboro, and we'll get you looking forward to a new year. And we're back with 5.52 remaining here in the first quarter. Dexter out to a good start. A few turnovers here by Notre Dame with an 8-3 score, and Dexter getting the early advantage. Yeah, I mean, when, when Dexter's applied the defense, they've been able to cause the turnovers. Melanie McKeown with and the three good by Erica Cobb. So Dexter leads 11 to three. Notre Dame will drive. So far, not been able to get much offensively going. Three, no good. Rebounded Allison Gerald. She'll give it to Paige, he'll push it up to Cobb, to McEwen. Gerald wide open, won't go. Rebounded by number 12, Annie Siebert. And the basket's good by Carson Powers. The power so far with all five of Notre Dame's points. And it's good. So Melanie McEwen having a stellar first quarter. So for Dexter, two sophomores, Melanie McEwen and Waldner will check in. And she converts the three-point play. So Dexter's up 14-5, Tyler, with 4.42 to go. Yep, great start here for the Lady Bearcats. Notre Dame just got to find a rhythm here both on both sides of the court. Having a hard time uh, being effective on both sides. They are. They've, they've not really been able to penetrate. Dexter has left them open a couple times for shots, but and another walk. So, and number 22, Shelby Beesink will check back into the game for the Lady Bulldogs. And another turnover. Erica Cobb up the floor to Paige Patterson. She can't handle the pass. McEwen saves it once again. McEwen drives, ball stripped, up the floor to Powers. Waldner fouls, prevents the layup. So Gerald and No will check back into the ball game for the Bearcats. And 
Nina Dan. So the Bearcats inbound it up the floor, no problem with the press. They're going to whistle Shelby Beesing for that foul. Kewen inbounded to no. Gerald for three. Off the back of the rim, but big rebound by Waldner out to Erica Cobb. Hannah knows three won't go. And number 25, Taylor Feeney will check into the ball game for the Lady Bulldogs, along with number 35, Casey Landwe. No inbounds at the Cobb, up to Waldner. Patterson gets it out top to Cobb. She'll hand it back off to know they'll set up the offense. Neither team really been able to set up much of an offense. Yeah. I mean, most of Dexter points have come off turnovers. Yeah, with Notre Dame taking a, you know, an early deficit here, they've got to feel good about what, how they play when they get into their defensive set. Yeah, they do. I mean, they and pulls to another turnover there, but regain. So number 33, Melon Madeline Rosenquist. And number 12, Annie Siebert will check back into the ball game with the Lady Bulldogs. Shot won't go. The Lady Bulldogs will retain possession. Returning for Notre Dame, number 23, Haley Lynch. So number 23, Haley Lynch, will also come back into the ball game for the Bulldogs. Deep three by Powell or Welter. Just like that, we have a four-point ball game. And Notre Dame shot the ball well last time against the Lady Bearcats, yeah. and they really depend upon shooting that outside shot well. And, you know, Dexter hitting a little drought here. They certainly need to get the momentum back on their side. Yes, they do. I mean, they've, they've not been able to convert a basket in a while. Nice shot there, shot. just as we're talking about that. Hannah No averaging 21 points a game this year. Notre Dame had a look at, a bas at the basket, but chose to. So Dakota Reynolds will check into the ball game for Alice and Gerald. And wide open three, nobody. Remotely close to her. Well, Notre Dame's just slowly 
gotten back, gotten back right in the mix here. Has it been all all in one, all yeah. at once? And we got a timeout, 30 second timeout. We'll be right back. Forwards and backwards. Can you flip it over? <laughs> oh. While I may not be able to do your job, I'm here to help with all of your commercial or home lending. Our loans are simple and inexpensive. I'll get the job done with personal financial assistance at First National Bank, believing in community and preparing for the future. It's nice, but you know what? I think I'm going to stick to the banking job. And we're back here at Cape Central Fieldhouse. 49 seconds remaining here in the first quarter, and Notre Dame's closed, closed this extra lead to three points, and uh, Dexter's got the ball, and Dexter's lost some of the momentum they built up here early on in the first quarter, Kevin. Yeah, they had an eight-point lead and had all the momentum in the world, and kind of like you said, Notre Dame's just kind of inched back, handing over for three. And here, the Bulldogs are going to have a chance to tie it. And under 30 seconds now here in the first. Won't go. Rebounded by Erica Cobb. And deflected. Easy two for Notre Dame. Oh. And we got a foul call here with six Notre seconds Dame remaining Dame here Dame in the first. The first, Notre Dame Bulldogs will make a couple of substitutions here. With 6.6 .6 seconds on the clock, Dexter leads 16-15 here at the end of the first quarter. And can't get it off in time. And that'll bring it into the first quarter. 16 to 15 lead for the Dexter Lady Bearcats after one. We'll be back with the second quarter coming up. I'm Dan, and this is Clay. You got a new hat. Yeah, my thong, the old insurance agent gave me this. I promised we'd mention his name on TV. Oh, it's cool. Yep. Now give it back. Take it back. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> kind of funny. And besides, we never mentioned your agent's name. Oh, yeah? Hi, I'm Travis Miller with Farm Bureau Insurance in Dexter. Please come by and see me for all your home, farm, life, health, and auto needs. Professional service with care and compassion. We at Rainey Mathis Funeral Homes strive to provide you a respectable environment and services during the time of your loss. We offer numerous services, including pre-planning arrangements, memorial family tributes, and webcasting for those unable to attend a service. We will listen to you and your wishes to help plan a celebration consistent with your expectations. Rainey Mathis Funeral Homes in Dexter and Bernie. And we're back here, live from Cape Central Fieldhouse, and getting underway with this second quarter. 16 to 15 lead for the Dexter Lady Bearcats. And uh, Kevin, boy, this is a close game all of a sudden. Yeah, I mean, it looked like Dexter early on was going to walk in here and command a big lead, but Notre Dame not giving up. And, and Notre Dame started to handle the ball a little better, didn't turn it over as much, and that's where Dexter really pushed out yeah. that lead. And uh, Notre Dame's kind of held the, the turnovers in check here in the latter part of that first quarter. And Erica Cobb there picks up her second foul, and that's, that's huge for the Bearcats. She's a key part of this, this team. So the Bulldogs will inbound it under their own basket. Wide open three, won't go. But Strong rebound there by number 23, Haley Lynch, but Dexter able to get the jump ball. So inbounded to McEwen. Lobs it up over to No in the corner to Gerald. She finds No inside. And 
And McEwen will be whistled for her second foul. And we've got we've come back on. Uh, all of you viewing at home, we went out for a few minutes and be patient with us tonight. We haven't done a broadcast from this location, so uh, we're trying to work the kinks out as we go. So uh, just stay patient with us throughout the night. The Bearcats are going to have to pick up some rebounds. I mean, just two key rebounds there. That And Notre Dame creating opportunities for themselves, Kevin, getting second chance opportunities. And and if you're in this role of, you know, probably not the favorite coming in, that's the that's the type of game you want, as many oh, yeah. opportunities as you can. And Dexter got to be more aggressive on those defensive rebounds. Yes, they do. And she makes the front end of her two shot, or, or the one and one, I apologize. In and out, McEwen comes down with the rebound. Gerald thought about it. Inside to no, she goes up strong and it'll be good. So she'll get a chance at the three point play. And Dexter got an open bucket there. Really moved the ball around quickly. That's, yeah. The ball movement was the difference. And got Hannah No open underneath. And uh, that that's, that's you know, when they're playing against this defense as uh, Notre Dame's playing, that's what you need is that quick ball movement and you'll get quick open opportunities. You're exactly right, Tyler. And a little change in the offense there. You know, Hannah normally playing on the wing. Coach Allen is deciding to move her inside. Oh, Dexter forcing another turnover against the Lady Bulldogs. So they lead 21-16 as we're about a minute and 20 seconds in to the second quarter. Gerald continues to set up over in the corner. She's wanting to spot up, spot up for that three-point shot she has. And nice drive by McEwen. That'll give her nine points on the night. Yeah, nice drive there, aggressiveness, and to, to go there in the paint and knock that down. So the Bearcats with three seniors, two sophomores on the floor, and the big three by Casey Landry. Gerald for three, won't go, but rebounded by Paige Patterson. She puts the ball on the floor and it cost her a turnover. Bulldogs spot up again. Won't go. And probably the smallest girl on the floor comes up with the rebound. Some nice hustle there by Casey Landry. And Notre Dame getting some open opportunities yes. there from three. They haven't been able to knock down a few open ones, but uh, Dexter certainly need to get out on those shooters. So Erica Cobb and Michaela Waldner will check back into the ball game for the Bearcats. Wide open in the middle, Haley Lynch just lays it in. So we have a two-point ball game, 23-21 with 5-10 to go here in the first half. Patterson shoots, good. Nice outside jumper yes. there Patterson. Coach Peters, she she runs them in and out. They play eight, nine girls from what I've seen tonight. Well, they, they've got to keep the intensity up. Yeah, you know, they, they've got to keep the energy up, and that's certainly their game plan coming in. Hannah no drives. It's going to be a foul called on the floor. So that foul will be get called against 
Shelby Beesink, her second personal foul. So that'll be enough to put Dexter in the 1-1. One -one. And Hannah converts the front end. And the second one. Bearcats continue to apply that pressure. And Dakota Reynolds will be charged with a foul. Looked like she may have deflected yeah. that away, but uh, got, got charged with the reach-in foul there. And Coach, Coach Allen not happy about the call, and that'll be Dakota's second personal foul. You know, the officials have made it clear tonight that they're going to call a tight ball game, and you know, they've called it tight both ways. I mean, it's not been one way or the other. Yeah. So whether you're a fan of that or not. Yeah. Those reach-ins will get you. you know, those oh, are, yeah. If you're yeah, throwing the hand you're reaching in, there. in uh, more times than not, you'll get called for it. Yep. So Rosenquist converts the one and one. Oh, that's it. And uh, we got a foul call. Is, uh, Erica Cobb going up for the shot. Didn't quite see the defender there. I didn't see the, the foul called on. Is that uh, Powers? Yeah, and I think Erica even thought that maybe she had traveled. And we've got a quick timeout. We'll be right back. Clear. There's a better way to jumpstart your soil back to health. Apply Enzone to protect and increase nitrogen efficiency without killing bacteria. Apply Prevent to increase phosphorus availability and reduce fixation. Better yet, use them both to get more from your fertilizer investment and see higher potential yields. Ag Explorer, your prescription for healthy soil. I chose Three Rivers College. Caring staff made it easy to enroll I'm receiving affordable, quality college classes. Day, evening, and online classes let me work college into my schedule. With locations throughout Southeast Missouri and over 200 course offerings, including online courses, Three Rivers can help you earn a college or career technical degree. I chose Three Rivers College. You should, too. Enroll today. Learn more at trcc.edu. Three Rivers College. Success starts here. And we're live back here at the Cape Central Fieldhouse, and the Lady Bearcats, Erica Cobb, will be at the line. And uh, presumably, is it three shots? You well, think? I, I, I'm not even sure. I mean, cause she kind of went up. I'm not sure if the official, and apparently it is, not the one and one, and they're not in the double bonus. So I figured it was a shooting foul, yep. but I, wouldn't, I couldn't tell if her foot was on the line shooting two, but we'll find out here. Let's uh, shoot three here. So it was a three point attempt right yep. before the timeout. She didn't quite see the defender. It looked like she paused when she went up, and uh, fortunately for the Bearcats, got called for the foul and shot uh, three shots at the line. And she converts two out of the three, so that'll give Erica Cobb five points on the night. Notre Dame so far has not had many problems with the press. Three won't go. But rebounded by 22, Shelby Beesink. She gets it back out to their point guard, Carson Powers. And Powers is about as quick as they come. I mean, she, she can move in and out. And the good drive there by Siebert. Yeah, that was a nice move. Kuhn will bring the ball up the floor for the Bearcats, gets it over to Hannah Noe, who will drive. She'll get to shoot, too. Hannah does a good job of drawing that foul, so to say. You know, she will she penetrates, gets good body position. Yeah, and the way Notre Dame's shifting their defense, they're really playing aggressive out on the perimeter, closing down those outside shots, and they need a player like Hannah, Hannah Noah to uh, be aggressive towards the paint and 
you know, draw those fouls, get to the foul line. Yeah. Tyler Beesink just picking up her third foul. That could prove to be crucial for the Notre Dame yeah. Bulldogs. Hannah makes the back end of her two shots. Ooh, dangerous pass out to half court. But retained by Notre Dame here. So they'll set their offense up. Wide open under the basket is number 23. She misses it but gets her own rebound. Three Bearcats in there. I'm not sure how we didn't come up with a rebound. And Powers will be called for the carry. A good call by the official. So with 3.10 to go here in the first half, the Bearcats lead 30 to 25. Hannah no drives, won't go. Patterson with the rebound. Gets it out to Gerald, over to Cobb, back to no for three. No good. And we're going to go the full court length of the court here for Notre Dame to shoot some free throws, and it's one of one. Yeah, Paige Patterson called for over the back. We'll see if won't go. Rebounded by Erica Cobb. And number 15, Carson Powers, picks up her third foul. So. Two key players for Notre Dame with three fouls. Erica Cobb, two for three from the free throw line tonight. We're really starting to rack up the fouls here. We've got yeah. ten fouls for Notre Dame and nine for the Lady Bearcats. So uh, yeah, 19 fouls called in the first half. Uh, fouls couldn't come into this game come the fourth quarter. And Dexter's got to be more careful than Notre Dame. They don't have quite the bench that yeah. Notre Dame does. That you know, Notre Dame will really throw the throw different players out. Yeah, so, uh, you're exactly right. Good defense by Paige Patterson. Erica Cobb will bring it up the floor for the Bearcats. As I look, it looks as Melian McKeon appears to be ready to check back into the ball game for the Bearcats. Out front to no. To the sophomore Reynolds over to Cobb. She'll shoot three. Good. So the Bearcats Back to a nine-point lead, their largest lead in the night, 34 to 25, with a minute 50 to go here in the first half. Nice drive by Haley Lynch. And that's two two good drives here in the second quarter she's had. Reynolds for three. Off the back of the rim, won't go. So it will be Notre Dame ball. If you're just tuning in, the Lady Bearcats 34, Notre Dame Lady Bulldogs 27 with about a minute and 30 seconds to go here in the first half. And now we're starting to look at look like the, the first part of the first quarter now. Dexter's starting yeah. to get a little momentum, push their lead out. And let's see if Notre Dame can stifle that run here. McEwen, great defense, pushes it up the floor, drives. And McEwen, McEwen. May, maybe have in, anticipated some yeah. contact there that didn't come, so yeah. lost her footing, turns it over to Notre Dame. McEwen just a sophomore, and she's had a spectacular game so far here tonight. Notre Dame. 
And they leave Caitlin Welter wide open and she makes them pay. So 34-29. Reynolds throws it away. Shot won't go, but Hannah No will pick up. That's an unfortunate miss for Notre Dame. Yeah. That's, an easy, that's a good easy look under the basket. Just, just rims out. Uh, fortunate break there for the Lady Bearcats. Could have been a three-point opportunity. Yeah. Casey Lamwey had come in earlier and hit a big three, big rebound. She's back in, makes both of her free throws. Erica Cobb will check back into the ball game for Dakota Reynolds. Inbound to McEwen. Bearcats may try to hang on for the final basket here. I, I don't see any direction from Coach Allen from the bench, but we've got 20 seconds to go. Back out top to McEwen. She goes in, drives, won't go, but gets her own rebound. Ball on the floor. Notre Dame comes up with it. Shot up. Wow. A spectacular shot by number 33, Madeline Rosenquist. What an end to the first half yeah. as Notre Dame gets the basket to bring them within one of the next year Lady Bearcats. So 34-33, I mean, it, we said it. It's going to be a tight game, so I, I guess we'll go to a break, Tyler, and be yep. back right before the start of the second half. We'll be back. Deposit your check here. Or here. Or even there. Deposit your check wherever you are with First Midwest Bank's new mobile deposit. Just tap, snap, deposit. It's that simple. New mobile deposit from First Midwest Bank, serving the communities we call home. Winning on the basketball court doesn't happen by accident. Players and coaches work throughout the long season conditioning for the rigors of competition. Practice upon practice, the lessons learned by our athletes will, however, serve them well for a lifetime. Lessons of teamwork, hard work, and commitment to excellence. At Bank of Advance, we believe that character in sports help to build it. athletes both on the court and in the classroom. Bank of Advance, where a handshake still matters. Four locations to serve you, Dexter, Bell City, Advance, and Chappie. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. And folks, if you've not been to the Winchester Place, come in and take a look at this facility. You don't know what you have missed. We are very proud of this facility. A lot of people do not realize we're here, what we can offer to them, and what a facility we have. And we would like to have people come by anytime and tour us. You won't find a better place to live or better staff to take care of you anywhere southeast Missouri. I'll guarantee it. We are located at 400 Winchester Drive. Come down Bowman and we sit on the corner of Bowman and Winchester. Dexter Family Eye Care, your local vision source provider. We're at an all new location at 812 One Mile Road in Dr. Coburn's previous office. We offer the latest in technology with undilated retinal exams and provide consultation for both cataract and LASIK procedures. We have your next pair of sunglasses with quality brands such as Costa, Ray-Ban, and Maui Gym. Our display room has a variety of adult and children's frames. Buy one complete set of glasses and get the second set of lenses free when you purchase the second frame. Stop by our new location at Dexter Family Eye Care. So I switched my car insurance to State Farm. I saved 480 bucks. You know what that is? Yeah, don't say it. See what it is, right? Yeah, hey, don't. It's a lot of dough. Switch and you could save 480 bucks with State Farm. 
about it now. See if Chris Brandon and Dexter can save you a lot of dough. Get to a better state. State Farm. For lunch, supper, anytime, the best food in Dexter is always Pizza Hut Wing Street. Our famous pizzas are handmade with all natural ingredients, no fillers, no preservatives. For a quick lunch, try our buffet. Eat all you want. Our delicious pasta selections will soon be your family favorite. And Wing Street Wings are perfect for get-togethers. Wing it like a pro. Add potato wedges, dunkers, or mini pies with a two-liter of your favorite Pepsi product, and you've got a full meal. There's always something good cooking at your Dexter Pizza Hut. Call or order online today. I try so hard, but there's always more work at the office than there are hours to get it done. And then there's night school, trying to finish up my degree. And since my husband's gone, my kids need me more than they ever have. Where am I going to find the strength to get through it all? Isaiah 40, 31. But they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Do the best you can and trust in God for your strength. And we're back here live from the Cape Central Fieldhouse. It's halftime of this girls' class four district one championship and Dexter on top by one point, 34 to 33. Notre Dame closed it out in very exciting fashion of basket. And there's a few seconds to go to cut the Dexter lead to one. And boy, you know, we thought Dexter was gonna push it out. They got an eight point lead at two different times in this game. And Notre Dame closes it out to one point each time. And that's where we stand. One point lead for Dexter here at halftime, Kevin. Yeah, I mean, you've got to give a ton of credit to the Notre Dame Lady Bulldogs. You know, at one time, I think Dexter even had a nine-point lead late there in the second quarter. Um, you know, then, you know, lost the lead, got it back up to seven. You know, we had a turnover. The Bulldogs just not giving up and made shots when they need them. I mean, the last shot made there by Madeline Rosenquist. I mean, it would be a top 10 play on Sports Center. She was falling out of bounds and threw it up. And, you know, ultimately the Dexter Lady Bearcats only lead 34-33. And you and I talked about it. Outside of not getting very many defensive rebounds, neither team played very bad. And, you know, matter of fact, Dexter probably has produced the most turnovers. Yeah, uh, Dexter's had two good runs in the game. They just haven't been able to sustain it, sustain it. And this, this is what, what the second half might be about is who can, or if Dexter can hold off Notre yeah. Dame's uh, answer to their drive. And, uh, you know, Dexter's, you, you can tell that they've had the, you know, kind of the lead in this game. They, I don't think they've really relinquished the lead since early on in the game. Yeah. I don't think Notre Dame's had the lead in this game, if I'm not no, mistaken. I don't think so. But, uh, you know, it's going to be vital for Dexter to get out to a good start here because, you know, no, Notre Dame's shown that they've been able to create some momentum when they've got oh, yeah. a deficit. So you certainly don't want to let them have momentum potentially with a lead. So Dexter needs to come out with a very strong third quarter. Notre Dame's going to come out right out of the gate, try to build up on that momentum that they closed in on the first half. So it's, this – going to be a great game coming down to the end here. Oh, I agree. And, I mean, we, we kind of knew that coming into it. But, you know, and it's it's been everything we thought it would be. You know, one big key for the Lady Bearcats, um, you know, they're known for their perimeter shooting. First half, only two three-point shots made, both of those by Erica Cobb. Uh, you know, their leading scorer, Hannah No does have ten points on the night, followed by Paige Patterson with nine, and then uh, Erica Cobb with nine. So, you know, Big key for Dexter, you know, the Lady Bulldogs do have two of their key players in Shelby B. Sink and Carson Powers, both with three fouls each, and these officials have called it very tight tonight. Yeah. We've had quite a few balls. I think 19 fouls called in that first half, yep. 10 for uh, Notre Dame, 9 for Dexter. So both these teams probably need to play a little bit more hands-off because coming down to the end of the fourth quarter, you don't need your main players going out in this contest, and it, it could come down to foul trouble. I agree, and Dexter Bearcats will have possession here as we start the second half. Cobb shoots, won't go. No with the rebound to the corner over to McEwen. Inside to Cobb, or from Gerald to No, won't go. The Bulldogs with a chance to take their first lead of the night. Out 
And I tell you, they and had nice a look. chance there. Shelby Beeson. And Lady Bearcats on a nice look here, but unable to get it to fall, but a foul on Notre Dame. Dexter will retain possession. Two good looks for both yeah. teams early on here. I'll tell you what, the Bearcats are going to have to figure out some way to stop that easy inside shot. Nice inbound play there, a little tap pass yeah. back to Noah on the inbound. Because if Notre Dame would set up and run their offense, they've had the back door pass all night long. Anytime they get the ball on the baseline, they're very effective, either going to the basket yeah. or hitting that open or swinging it across court for the open three or hitting somebody right there in the paint. Nice look to Erica Cobb. And then that's going to be Erica's third foul if that's who they call it on. That was a nice set play there. Erica did a good job flashing to the middle with the open space. Just couldn't get that shot to fall. So the Bearcats lead by three. And we'll be called for the, the kick. And I suppose Waldner will check him. Michaela Waldner will check him for Erica Cobb here. Michaela's brother, Trevor, uh, just picked up the state championship in the 138-pound uh, division recently. So congratulations to Mr. Waldner. And not sure if that'll be on Hannah Noah or Allison Jarrell. Looks like it will be against Jarrell. That'll be Allison's first foul on the night. So we're under two minutes into this second half and already three fouls called. And out of bounds over to Dexter. Nice. Defense there on the inbound by the Lady Bearcats. Yeah, nice hustle there by Michaela Waldner. And she throws it up the floor to Paige Patterson. Back over to McEwen to no. Gerald for three off the front of the rim. Allison un unable to convert a three yet tonight, but she is the record holder for the single season Three-pointers made at the Dexter for the Dexter Bearcats. Hustle play by there by Waldner. And it'll be enough to create a foul. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a foul on Notre Dame as that's on uh, Caitlin Walt Welter. Those are tough fouls to pick up. It's so far away from the basket. And as the, the fouls were called in the first half, they're going to likely pile up here and that just allows yeah. the other team to get to a bonus quicker, so that's a, that's a tough one to pick up there. Patterson lays it up, won't go. Well, there's a lid on the basket here early on yeah. for both teams. Both really. teams. I mean, that's three missed baskets underneath, or maybe four. And both – both of these teams will look back on these opportunities they oh, missed goodness. underneath and just yeah. they'll be uh, scratching their heads on those. I mean, we're, you know, nearly two minutes, two and a half minutes into this first half and only one made basket. And this is coming from two very good offensive teams. And another missed layup. We'll see if Hannah can convert this one. And it goes. So the Bearcats increase their lead to five, 38-33. Three-pointer by Rosenquist, won't go. McEwen rebounds it. I apologize, that was Welter. Waldner. Gets the pass deflected, but Melanie McEwen able to pick it up. Waldner drives. We'll have a jump ball, and that'll be Notre Dame ball. And 
number 35, Casey Landwe, will check into the ball game for the Bulldogs and for the Bearcats. Erica Cobb along with Dakota Reynolds. And then also for the Lady Bulldogs, number 25, Taylor Feeney will check into the ball game. And she drives the length of the floor, so Coach Allen can't be happy about that. And Walner's going to get charged with the travel. She took probably half an extra step there trying to get the ball up court. So 38-35 with 4.05 to go here in the, the third quarter. Notre Dame Lady Bulldogs still looking to tie it or take their first lead. So Dakota Reynolds, that'll be her third personal foul of the night. And the Lady Bulldogs just run in three different players. Also, the Bearcats are going to run Melanie McEwen in for Dakota Reynolds as she just picked up her third foul. The steal by McEwen. She drives, goes to the best. Uh, and they're that's a tough one there. A tough yeah, ball to make. That is. That's Looked like uh, had Hannah Noah open up to the basket, maybe a good dump off pass there for an easy two, but uh, a, a good aggressive play, just unfortunate for Dexter gets it a charging call. Yeah, that, that depends on which bench you're setting on, on yeah. how good of a call you think yeah. that is. It could have went either way. And as a defender, being by yourself, a one on a two on one break, a good defensive play. Yeah. I mean, that's, it that's was. The best I you mean, hope for. McEwen probably should have dished that ball off. And a turnover there by Allison Gerald. Dexter had a few turnovers, trying to get in transition, traveling violations, yeah. and a couple miscues here. Oh, she runs right into in. her own own player, and that was a hard collision, but. She jumps back up. Cobb shoots and won't go. Gerald flew into the lane, but unable to pick up the rebound. Notre Dame. No, they're going to call that on the floor. On the floor. Nice drive. And that's a good call by the official. She did whistle it before the shot was ever attempted. And Allison Gerald will pick up her second foul. And we got a timeout. We'll be right back. Over 12,000 financial advisors. Over $700 billion in assets under care. How did Edward Jones get so big? Could you teach our kids that trick? By not acting that way. <laughs> okay, last quarter. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. And we're back here live from the Cape Central Fieldhouse. Glad you joined us here on YHC Channel 21 and SeamoSportsZone.com. We got a close one here, folks. 3-12 remaining in the third. And back and forth game, Kevin. Yeah, I mean, if you're a, you're a fan of basketball, it's a, you know certainly a great game to watch. But, you know, both teams on the edge of their seat. Notre Dame still looking to try to take the lead as they're down 38-37. And another miscue by the Bearcats. Yeah, that was uh, Shelby B. Sink. Deflecting the ball right off the foot of uh, Hannah No. Hannah No looked like she was going to have a nice open look, but uh, nice awareness by B Sync to deflect the ball. And I imagine you will see the low Notre Dame Bulldog fans come unglued here if they're able to take the lead, as it'd be their first lead of the night. Bearcats. 
in the matchup zone that they consistently play. Nearly a turnover there by the Bulldogs. And she's open for three, won't go. Paige Patterson with the rebound. Bearcats looked a little out of sync there on that conversion, trying to convert it down the floor. No fakes, drives. Goes up, won't go. Rebounded by the Bulldogs. That was a nice drive by No. She could have taken that open three, but she was aggressive going to the basket, just couldn't get it to go. And now we're got back and forth action here. She goes up for the layup, so she'll get a chance to shoot two here. Tyler, I got a feeling that free throws are going to be key down this stretch, too. I Certainly. Mean, so far, Hannah tonight, she's five for six from the line. A chance to go six for seven here. She shoots, and it's good. So Notre, Notre Dame will inbound it as the Bearcats lead 40-37, minute 40 to go here in the third quarter. And Tyler, I don't think there's an empty seat in the building tonight. No, certainly won't be. Great atmosphere. Always a competitive district tournament this class oh, yeah. District 1. Boys and girls. I mean, they oh, both yeah. had teams that have, you know, with Sykeston winning the state championship a couple years ago, Final Four last year. And there's always a, a competitive district championship yeah. here, always. Hannah saves the turnover there. Saves it again, drives, goes up, shoots, rims out. Yeah, Hannah's had a few nice drives, very good aggressive drives, just unable to get it to fall, and she picks up the, the backcourt foul. That's going to be her third foul. <laughs> Madeline Rosenquist will check in for the Notre Dame Lady Bulldogs, along with Casey Lanwee. So 40-37, Notre Dame with a chance to tie here. They go up, they scored. Number 25, Taylor Feeney, and that's her first points of the night, but pulls it within one. Up top to no, she shoots, and it's good. That's a big three there. Dexter having a hard time yeah. getting good, good looks to go down, and Hannah No knocked that one down. And that's Hannah's first three of the night. Good defense by Walt, the two sophomores, Reynolds and McEwen. And out of bounds over to the Lady Bearcats. And Erica Cobb will check into the ball game for the Dexter Lady Bearcats. So with five seconds to go here in the third quarter, Bearcats have a 43-39 lead. Cobb for three, won't go. And that brings it into the third quarter. 43-39 lead for the Dexter Lady Bearcats. We'll be back with the fourth and final quarter coming up. In 1958, my father Allen started in the car business. And today we're celebrating over 55 years in the car business. A lot of things have changed. Brands have come and gone. Models have been redesigned. But one thing has always stayed the same. Our commitment to our customers, our drive for complete satisfaction, 
and our mission to give the best service in the area. Professional grade runs in the family. Stop by today and see us at Allen Christian Buick GMC in Dexter. Thank you. Can I help you today? Uh, no thanks. I'm just looking. Oh, this is cute. <clears throat> so? You wouldn't do it there. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Like they're the fashion police. <laughs> And we're back here live from the Cape Central Fieldhouse getting ready for the fourth quarter and an interesting third quarter there. Kevin, uh, give us the lowdown. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting to say the least. Lo you know, call it a defensive quarter or a low-scoring quarter, but Dexter only scoring nine points to Notre Dame's six points um, and Hannah No scoring all nine points for the Lady Bearcats. So and this is the home over. stretch, and the Bearcat turn it over immediately. And Siebert will pick up two points. It's a 43-41 ball game. Bearcats patiently setting up their offense. And Patterson able to get it to fall. To Paige Patterson. I tell you what, Notre Dame not playing intimidated at all. I mean, no. they're, you know, this is a very good Dexter ball team, and Notre Dame's showing them why they deserve to be in the finals too. They'll re retain possession there. Offensive execution is big here, Kevin. Both sides. I mean, whoever's going to execute better offensively is going to be the winner here tonight. Oh, I agree. And Paige with a nice block. And her point guards <laughs> run off and leave her, but Gerald comes back. And you just, you've got to have better floor awareness. Yeah, backcourt violation turns it over to the Lady Bulldogs. So the Bulldogs keep inching back, but have been unable to take the lead. And... Hallie Lynch is going to get called for the foul there. Well, Notre Dame's had a few good looks from three. Haven't really yeah. been able to hit that at a consistent rate. I tell you what, if they were hitting those shots as they did the first time they played Dexter, we'd have a totally different ball game Probably tonight. Probably would. This ball knocked out of bounds by number 12, Annie Siebert. Bearcats inbound it. Wagner get it over to Patterson. She looks inside, sees nothing. Back out to McEwen, over to Cobb in the corner to no. All right, Wagner with the turnover. How is she? I think she left her too wide open. Well, it might have been an instance there where she expected the contact. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the Notre Dame Lady Bulldogs will take a timeout, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Cecil Weeks of Quality Center here in downtown Malden, where we've been in business since 1977. We have the best selection of Whirlpool and Maytag appliances. We also have the latest LCD, LED, and plasma high-definition televisions from LG and Sharp, as well as the finest furniture for your living room or bedroom. And don't forget, delivery is available. So come and experience the Quality Center Furniture and Appliance Store in downtown Malden. 
And we're back. Uh, Dexter Lady Bearcats with some burst of momentum there as they take a six-point lead and force the Notre Dame Lady Bulldogs to take a timeout to regroup. Yeah, and this is the time you want to run. You yes. got 527 remaining, and uh, Notre Dame had a nice look uh, Again. for a transition bucket there to cut it down to what, what that would have been one point, cut it to one point, and Dexter comes down and gets a bucket of their own. So uh, it's all about execution, as uh, we mentioned just a few moments ago, Kevin. Yeah, and I, you know, you hit on it earlier, but I, I think both of these teams are going to be highly disappointed when they go back and watch the film. At so many missed opportunities. And Melanie McEwen just having a stellar night with the steal. The shot won't go by Hannah No. I tell you what, Melanie McEwen would be my one of my MVPs tonight. She's just had a stellar game. And not all of it are showing up in the book. So Waldner ties that ball up. And Allison Gerald will check into the ball game for the Lady Bearcats. Allison, the hot shooter, still looking for her first three-pointer of the night. Matter of fact, first points of the night. The block underneath, couldn't quite tell who got that, or got the block, maybe Gerald. McEwen runs it down, him throws it back. See, this, is, this has happened to Dexter the entire game. They've had chances to put it away maybe, and Missed on opportunities, and Annie Siebert. Siebert makes them pay. Gerald back out to no. You know, they're just, they're not giving Gerald much of a look at all. Kewen drives, won't go. We got a four point ball game. 47 43 to go here in the fourth quarter. Oh, opened up. Easy drive. You just can't give them that. And deflected. Stays with the Lady Bearcats. So Paige Patterson, Dakota Reynolds will check into the ball game for McEwen and Waldner. Cobb drives in the corner to Gerald, and it's good. So I'm sure Gerald's happy to get that monkey off her yeah, back. Finally gets the three-pointer to go and gives uh, the Lady Bearcats some breathing room. And Notre Dame answers with their own. Ooh, dangerous cross-court pass. Yeah, the Bearcats fortunate to come up with that one. Yeah, turnovers certainly will come to bite you here late in the fourth quarter. Oh, nice move by No. Oh. She's just been a little off on those yeah. uh, I mean, shots there at the basket. You know, not super easy shots no. by no means, but still, you know, shots she normally makes. Foul underneath, and that'll send the Lady Bulldogs to the line. That's Shoot one and one. That'll be Allison Gerald with three fouls as well. And you're right, it'll be a one and one here for the That's Notre Dame Lady Bulldogs. That's a chance to uh, tie the game here for Notre Dame. Lady Bulldogs six for seven from the line overall tonight. And they pull it within one, so we may see our first tie of the night, Tyler. We just might. And we do. So with 252 to here, we're all leaving at 50 apiece.
And we'll see who can hang on here. Yeah, I think both teams need to be aggressive going towards the basket. Uh, Dexter's had some success getting to the basket. You certainly don't want to take any ill-advised shots on the perimeter for long rebound opportunities oh, yeah. for either team. Well, they just need to play. Each team needs to play their game, and there's a steal by the Bulldogs. Oh, and then they turn turnover. it over. Two turnovers by both teams. And the Lady Bearcats will take a timeout, so we'll be right back. I am Tyler Roland Hubrecht. I am the Republican nominee for the special election and candidate for the 151st state representative race. I will be your conservative voice in Jefferson City, committed to fighting for our Southeast Missouri values and principles. I am a lifelong resident of Stoddard County and I look forward to meeting everyone in our district and talking with you. I ask for your support on August the 5th. Thank you. Paid for by citizens for Tyler Roland Hubrecht, Gilbert Willard Treasurer. Here at Gene and Company Certified Public Accountants, we strive to provide quality accounting and income tax services in an accurate and timely fashion. It's the time of year to file your yearly tax return, and we invite you to visit with us face-to-face -to, -face to compile your return quickly and accurately. We'll make the process as painless as possible with electronic filing and personal preparation. So stop by any of our locations in Dexter, Malden, and Jonesboro, and we'll get you looking forward to a new year. And we're back here live from the Cape Central Fieldhouse. We've got 2.14 remaining. The Lady Bearcats with a possession tie game. We had back-to-back -back turnovers before the break for both teams. Gerald for three. Just off the mark. So the Bulldogs with a chance to take their first lead of the night. And Dexter has to be careful. Notre Dame's in the bonus, one and one. Now under two minutes. And turnover by Notre Dame. That's two straight turnovers yeah. on their possessions. And you can't have that certainly with just a few minutes to go here. No, I mean, it's, you know, turnovers, you just can break your back with a minute and 43 to go here. No, smartly slows it down. She drives, wide open lane, it's good. The so Bearcats get their lead back, 52-50. Nice block by Paige Patterson. And we'll see if the Bearcats. And we got a timeout with a minute 13 remaining. We'll take a quick break. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burned. That's it. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a hamburger. Yeah, that is, I don't really you, gotta, you wouldn't do it there. you got to be crazy. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Flip it over. <laughs> oh. While I may not be able to do your job, I'm here to help with all of your commercial or home lending. Our loans are simple and inexpensive. I'll get the job done with personal financial assistance at First National Bank, believing in community and preparing for the future. This is nice, but you know what? I think I'm going to stick to the banking job. And we're back here live from the Class 4 District 1 Final for the girls tournament here. And we got a 52 to 50 lead for the Lady Bearcats with the possession of minute 13. And we might see some uh, clock killing offense here, Kevin. Yeah, I agree. I expect the Bearcats to come out and force Notre Dame to foul. And a few fouls to give here uh, yeah, by Notre Dame. That's the fifth team foul. So Siebert will pick our her third foul. Dexter still needing two more fouls before they're in the bonus. A 
They're, Extra they're gonna, play they're totally spreading passive. it out. I hear yeah. Coach Allen say spread, spread. Yeah, you don't want to play totally passive there. You want to spread it out, and then you know once that defense starts to converge, if you can pick up an easy point, uh, easy basket, you'll certainly want to take advantage of that. But uh, smart by the Lady Bearcats to spread it out and force Notre Dame to to force some fouls here. Yeah, and this walk down here earlier by Notre Dame has proved to be <laughs> really crucial unless they're able to create a turnover here. They're not. And it looks like that foul is going to be charged to Powers. That'll be her fourth foul. But it doesn't really matter at this point with 49.7 seconds to go. So Hannah No will go to the line for the one and one. And so far tonight, she is six for seven from the line. In and out. And a chance to tie it, maybe take the lead here for the Lady yeah. Bulldogs. 40 seconds remaining. And the Bearcats can't afford to foul here either. And uh, Notre would, Dame's had two straight turnovers on their past two possessions, but a uh, three to fly here, no good. Won't go, but big defensive rebound. I mean, number 15 ties it up. Ties this game with 20 seconds remaining. One possession left here. If Dexter can go for the last shot. And we got a timeout by the coach Chad Allen for Dexter. 14 seconds remaining. We'll be right back. I'm Dan, and this is Clay. You got a new hat. Yeah, my thong bureau insurance agent gave me this. I promised we'd mention his name on TV. Oh, it's cool. Yep. Now give it back. Take it back. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> kind of funny. And besides, we never mentioned your agent's name. Oh, yeah? Hi, I'm Travis Miller with Farm Bureau Insurance in Dexter. Please come by and see me for all your home, farm, life, health, and auto needs. And we're back here live from the Cape Central Fieldhouse. 14 seconds remaining. We've got a tie game. The Dexter Lady Bearcats have the possession. And, Kevin, looks like we're coming down to one last possession here, maybe heading to overtime. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I expect Coach Allen to try to put the ball in the hands of Hannah No or Allison Gerald here with, you know, time remaining. But, you know, nevertheless, I mean, Dexter has several good shooters, but, you know, those are two of your. Yeah, and you, you need to be aggressive here. You'll. Drive to the basket. You've got the bonus in your possession, and Hannah Noel has been very good going to the basket. Yep. You might see a little pick and roll action here with enough time here with 14 seconds. So uh, aggressiveness is the key here. And it looks like little weave action here. It looks like uh, Hannah No. Two seconds. One gets it off and rims it off. Go. And we're headed to overtime, folks. 52 to 52 at the end of regulation. We'll take a quick break and be back with your overtime period. Professional service with care and compassion. We at Rainey Mathis Funeral Homes strive to provide you a respectable environment and services during the time of your loss. We offer numerous services, including pre-planning arrangements, memorial family tributes, and webcasting for those unable to attend a service. We will listen to you and your wishes to help plan a celebration consistent with your expectations. Rainy Mathis Funeral Homes in Dexter and Bernie. What is your emergency? Need assistance at County Road 61 and Highway 9. Help is on its way. Clear! There's a better way to jumpstart your soil back to health. Apply Enzone to protect and increase nitrogen efficiency without killing bacteria. Apply Prevent to increase phosphorus availability and reduce fixation. Better yet, use them both to get more from your fertilizer investment and see higher potential yields. Ag Explorer, your prescription for healthy soil. And we're back here in the Girls Class 4 District 1 final. We've got an overtime period coming up, Kevin. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not not what you wanted to see if you were a Lady Bearcat fan, but, you know, Notre Dame's got to be happy to be in this situation, and we knew it was going to be a good ball game. And Notre Dame able to hit a shot late. 
to force this overtime. Dexter a little late getting into their offense on that last possession. Didn't quite have enough time to get a good shot off. So uh, we're forced into this overtime period. And it's a four-minute period. And here we go. And the jump. So Dexter will get the, uh, the tip. Oh, dangerous Nearly pass. Nearly turned over. Bearcats being very patient here as they went back with the five that started the ball game, the four seniors and the sophomore, Melanie McEwen. Both teams in a bonus, so neither team really wanting to foul. And a charging foul on Hannah No. Nice step over defense there. I think that was uh, ha Haley Lynch Haley stepping Lynch. over. Notre Dame with a chance to, is it perhaps their first lead still? Yeah, it, it'd still be their first lead. <laughs> nice job to come away with the rebound there by Allison Gerald. You know, we mentioned that, Kevin. Notre Dame hasn't had a lead in this game. We're sitting here in overtime. Yeah, you know? I know. I mean, that shows you. I mean, resilient bunch, Notre Dame. Gerald for three, and it's good. <laughs> Big three by Gerald. Certainly needed for the Lady Bearcats. You certainly don't want to give a lead to Notre Dame with that kind of you know, momentum no, you and enthusiasm, don't. but they've been and able to find Wide open under the basket. You wonder how that happens. They caught us sleeping. So Dexter leads 55-54. No will drive, pulls up, shoots off the front of the rim, but big rebound by Paige Patterson. Jump ball, and it will be Lady Bulldog ball. And looks like we've got a timeout, so we'll take a quick break and be right back. I chose Three Rivers College. Caring staff made it easy to enroll. I'm receiving affordable, quality college classes. Day, evening, and online classes let me work college into my schedule. With locations throughout Southeast Missouri and over 200 course offerings, including online courses, Three Rivers can help you earn a college or career technical degree. I chose Three Rivers College. You should too. Enroll today. Learn more at trcc.edu. Three Rivers College. Success starts here. You'll feel good about this. SEMO Health Network. You'll feel better every day. We're gonna make it clear. Cause our health care makes you feel good. That's what you'll find right here. We have so many ways to take care of you today. You'll feel good about this. SEMO Health Network. And we're back with this overtime period. 2.20 remaining, 55-54 to 54 lead for the Lady Bearcats. And Notre Dame with the possession. And throw it away, tracked down by Waldner. Turn scores, no. <laughs> Anna No nearly with another steal. And another timeout. Coach Peters saw that 10 second violation coming quickly, so we got another timeout. We'll be right back. Deposit your check here. Or here. Or even there. Deposit your check wherever you are with First Midwest Bank's new mobile deposit. Just tap, snap, deposit. It's that simple. New mobile deposit from First Midwest Bank, serving the communities we call home. And 
we're back, folks, with two minutes remaining this overtime period. The Lady Bearcats with a 57-54 lead. Notre Dame called a quick timeout. They were a little out of flux dealing with the full court pressure by the Lady Bearcats and a quick timeout to avoid a potential 10-second violation. And Notre Dame back with the ball now. Up the floor, and they had the numbers there for a moment, but Bearcats able to recover. Gerald picking up some pressure here. And the steal by Waldner, and she'll, she'll force the foul against Caitlin Welter. So Waldner will go to the line for the one and one. Yeah, the dangerous pass and picked off by Waldner. Waldner's had a, two crucial steals yes. during this overtime period. And she makes the front end of the one to one. So the Lady Bearcats lead 58-54 with a minute 43 to go. That's that's a big free throw. It gives yeah. you that two two possession cushion. And the second one. So that's her first two points of the night. It's a big two points. Cross court pass, almost thrown yes. away, but B Sync runs it down. Quick three on the left side. No good. We've got to come up with those type of rebounds, though. I mean, it was a long, long shot, but we've not not rebounded very well on the defensive end of the ball. Yeah, Notre Dame needs a bucket here to get it to one possession. And it'll be a two-shot foul. This, this was a crucial possession for Notre Dame. You're down five with just over a minute to go. They didn't have to rush this possession. If you score, you're one possession. You're where you want to be. But uh, good patience by them getting to the free throw line and certainly need to convert here to keep their hopes alive late in this game. And she makes the front end. So Erica Cobb will check into the ball game for Michaela Waldner and Dexter Crowd giving her applause. It's well due. And the second one good. So three point ball game with a minute seven to go. Dexter has the lead. And they, they're going to spread it out. I hear Coach Allen saying spread. They're going to force Notre Dame to foul. Yeah, we're under a minute now. Notre Dame will have to pick up the aggressiveness here to at least go for a steal or force a foul to play the clock. And they commit the foul on Hannah Noel, so she'll go to the line to shoot. Uh, I believe it's one and one still. Not sure who they called that foul on. Officials discussing at midcourt. 2-5. So that's going to be against Feeney, her first personal foul. Oh, they called that loud foul on Lynch. I apologize. And makes it a four-point game, two-possession game. In favor of the Bearcats, 40 seconds remaining. And she makes the second one, so big free throws there by Hannah No. 61-56, and they create the turnover, a travel. Traveling violation turns over the Bearcats. And uh, some late miscues here by the Lady Bulldogs. Dexter's able to capitalize here, so uh, certainly the advantage in the Lady Bearcats' favor. 34 seconds remaining, a five-point lead. Just a clean inbound. And, and they'll foul Hannah No once again. And Hannah No 
Monroe gets the first to fall. So 62-56 with 33.4 seconds to go. And Hannah is four for four from the line here in the fourth quarter. Or, uh, excuse me, four for four from the line here in overtime. The Bearcats don't need to foul, but off the front of the rim, and yeah, that's going to be a foul against Hallie Lynch. And more free throws for the Lady Bearcats, double bonus. And the Lady, or the, the Bearcat fans smelling a victory here in the Cape Central Fieldhouse. They're on their feet. Probably the first sense of relief, and probably, yeah. probably the past hour and a half. Yeah, oh, no doubt. I mean, this team has kind of been a team of destiny. You know, the four se seniors have started since they were freshmen. Uh, you know, a lot of big things have been expected of this group, and, you know, they're they're probably going to beat a very good Notre Dame team tonight and maybe the toughest team they see on the road to Columbia. So Wagner with only four points all here in overtime. That'll be a two-point basket. Won't go. They're going to call Wagner for the foul on the floor. 5.3 seconds to go. The Bearcats lead by nine. And a few of the seniors for the Lady Bulldogs. We'll check out the ball game. And you hate to see, you know, the emotion on their face because the work these girls put in day in, day out is yeah, tough. It's just the finality of it all. And that'll do it. As we got a final for the girls' Class 4 District 1 championship. Dexter, 65-58. to 58. And it goes into overtime, and quite fitting for a rivalry between these two schools going back a handful of years and a very good hard-fought game by both teams. Two great programs, great coaching, yeah. and you can't ask for a better final for a girls' district championship than no, we I mean, saw here tonight. Yep, excellent, excellent game. And the Lady Bearcats will celebrate as and we got the presentations down on the court. First of all, for your district runner-up, the Lady Bulldogs of Notre Dame. And the Notre Dame Lady Bulldogs was second place in this year's Class 4 District 1 tournament. Fine season, ending at 21 and 3 on the year. And the Dexter Lady Bearcats finishing their year, or continuing their year, I wouldn't say finish. A little present was there. 24 and 3 on the year. They advanced to the Class four sectional round this is coming Wednesday evening at the Three Rivers College campus in Poplar Bluff. We'll be on hand for that Wednesday night. Bring that one live to you at six o'clock as the Dexter Lady Bearcats will advance on to the sectional round. And likely at this point, their opponents to be Park Hills Central uh, in the sectional round, which they played early in the year and defeated, but uh, gears up to be a nice sectional contest. This coming Wednesday evening, at the Best Activity Center in Poplar Bluff on the Three Rivers College campus. And we're going to take a quick break and be back with the final stats coming up. Winning on the basketball court doesn't happen by accident. Players and coaches work throughout the long season conditioning for the rigors of competition. Practice upon practice, the lessons learned by our athletes will, however, serve them well for a lifetime. Lessons of teamwork, hard work, and commitment to excellence. 
At Bank of Advance, we believe that character in sports help to build athletes both on the court and in the classroom. Bank of Advance, where a handshake still matters. Four locations to serve you, Dexter, Bell City, Advance, and Chappie. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Folks, if you've not been to the Winchester Place, come in and take a look at this facility. You don't know what you have missed. We are very proud of this facility. A lot of people do not realize we're here, what we can offer to them, and what a facility we have. And we would like to have people come by anytime and tour us. You won't find a better place to live or better staff to take care of you anywhere in southeast Missouri. I'll guarantee it. We are located at 400 Winchester Drive. Come down Bowman, and we sit on the corner of Bowman and Winchester. Dexter Family Eye Care, your local vision source provider. We're at an all-new location at 812 One Mile Road in Dr. Coburn's previous office. We offer the latest in technology with undilated retinal exams and provide consultation for both cataract and LASIK procedures. We have your next pair of sunglasses with quality brands such as Costa, Ray-Ban, and Maui Gym. Our display room has a variety of adult and children's frames. Buy one complete set of glasses and get the second set of lenses free when you purchase the second frame. Stop by our new location at Dexter Family Eye Care. So I switched my car insurance to State Farm. I saved 480 bucks. You know what that is? Yeah. Don't say it. See so what it is, right? Yeah, hey, don't. It's a lot of dough. Switch and you could save 480 bucks with State Farm. It's a lot of dough. See if Chris Brandon and Dexter could save you a lot of dough. Get to a better state. State Farm. For lunch, supper, anytime, the best food in Dexter is always Pizza Hut Wing Street. Our famous pizzas are handmade with all natural ingredients, no fillers, no preservatives. For a quick lunch, try our buffet. Eat all you want. Our delicious pasta selections will soon be your family favorite. And Wing Street Wings are perfect for get-togethers. Wing it like a pro. Add potato wedges, dunkers, or mini pies with a two-liter of your favorite Pepsi product, and you've got a full meal. There's always something good cooking at your Dexter Pizza Hut. Call or order online today. I try so hard, but there's always more work at the office than there are hours to get it done. And then there's night school, trying to finish up my degree. And since my husband's gone, my kids need me more than they ever have. Where am I going to find the strength to get through it all? Isaiah 40:31. But they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Do the best you can and trust in God for your strength. And we're back here post game at the Cape Central Fieldhouse. We'll go over the stats quickly for, to a great Class 4 District 1 Girls Championship game. Great rivalry between these two teams, and they both lived up uh, to that rivalry here tonight. Uh, we've got a 65-58 to 58 final in favor of the Bearcats here tonight. We'll go over the scores here. The next Lady Bearcats led in scoring by Hannah Noah, 27. Great night by Hannah Noah. Leading score for the Bearcats showed up in a big way here this evening, followed by Paige Patterson with 11, Erica Cobb with nine, Hannah Noe with nine, and also we've got Allison Gerald with six with two three-point baskets, and Michaela Wadner with four. And on the Notre Dame side, led in scoring by Carson Powers with 13, followed by Annie Siebert with 12, Caitlin Welter with eight, Haley Lynch with eight, Case uh, Landaway with five, followed by Shelby B. Sink with four, and also uh, Madeline Rosenkees with Quist with four, and Taylor Feeney with two, and that rounds out the score into 65 to 58. Dexter with the the win tonight. They advance on to the Class Four section round in the state tournament. Now to the round of 16. The section rounds the round of 16 for the state of Missouri. And uh, we'll take on Park Hill Central in the uh, sectional round. And uh, the Bearcats move on with another district championship. Looking to make another run at the Final Four in Columbia. Two wins away from the Final Four are the Lady Bearcats. And a uh, great game by Hannah Noe offensively. Big game offensively. Defensively, you got to look at Michaela Wander with big, two big steals in the overtime period. Really limited Notre Dame's ability to get – get on a roll offensively in the overtime period. And that was uh, pretty much the plays of the game. They're late in the game. Free throws by Hannah Noe pretty much put it away. 
in the overtime period. So a great game. Glad you joined us here on YHC TV, Channel 21, on the New Wave Cable System, and right here on SEMOSportZone.com. And we're not done yet here tonight. We've got the boys' Class 4 District 1 championship coming up in about 15 minutes. We're going to take a break and be about a 10-minute break. Be back with the beginning of that Class 4 District 1 boys' title coming up. <laughs> 